Hey guys, I'm Henning from Flip Normals, and in today's video, we will have a look at demystifying UV seams and showing you how you can fix this. Every single 3D artist who's doing anything with modeling and texturing will have experienced UV seams at some point, and they can be infuriating. The issue looks often like this. Here we have an asset which has UVs and has been textured and has decent topology. Then we try to render this guy. In this case, we will select it and hit the three key. And then something happens. You can see that all over the place, you get these weird little seams. In this case, we have just stylized this a little bit of making them super pink but you would probably see something similar to this in your versions as well maybe you only see it in the render maybe this more looks more like a displacement seam but regardless this is what the issue normally looks like so what is actually causing this issue fundamentally this is an issue due to this discrepancy between your texture map and the uvs at render time so let's have a look at what this means. If we select our mesh and then we unsmooth it like so, then we go to our UV and UV editor. So as you can see now, we have our model to the left and we have our UVs to the right, and these fit perfectly. There's basically a one-to-one -one fit between our textures and our UVs, which means that you won't have any seams. The problem is once you start to smooth this, and if we hit the three key now, you can start to smooth it, you see that the UVs are no longer the same as our textures. And this is due to something called UV smoothing. UV smoothing can be quite confusing if you don't really know what it is, but once you understand the general principle behind UV smoothing, it becomes quite simple. And we'll of course cover that in this video. So this is not a Maya issue or Max issue or Blender issue or anything like that. This is more fundamental. While we are using Maya in this video and we'll be using a bit of Mari later on, you can do this exact same thing if you were to paint in Photoshop and model in Blender or if you're using Painter with Cinema 4D. It really doesn't matter. The fundamental issue is between your texture map and your UVs. So we can control this quite easily if we go under, in this case, under the shape node. And then if we go to smooth mesh and under our open subdiv control, we have an item here called UV boundary smoothing. So if we were to set this to none, that means that when we are actually smoothing a model, like if we select it now, we'll hit the one key, nothing is smooth, and we hit the three key, the model is being smooth, but the UVs are not being smooth. And this means that if we were to set our model, in this case, to not smooth the UVs, we would have solved the issue. You can see it right now, no UV issues whatsoever. It's fine. The problem with this, however, is that currently our UVs then will not be matching the final model. In this case, our polygons are being smooth and a normal is generally being soft enough, while the UVs would then be rigid and square. Now, this might be fine in a lot of cases, but in a lot of cases, this would not be fine. Imagine if you had text going around here and it's currently rigid and then you smooth it, you would have issues where we wouldn't really know what your text would look like. You can have issues with logos deforming. For characters, this is often okay because you need less specificity. But if you really do need a high level of specificity, this is not a good way of doing it. Also, when you're doing your UV smoothing or UV interpolation, you shouldn't really do this in a case by case basis. You should find one UV smoothing algorithm which works for every single asset. And currently using none is not a good option. So then we have another one which is called preserve edges and corners. You can see what this is doing. If there's a corner like this, this will be preserved as a hard edge. But if there is a internal edge like this, you can see everything hidden here, this will be nice and soft. This is generally the way to do it. If we were to use preserve edges and corners, most of your models would be perfectly fine. Then we have Maya Catmull Clark. Now this one is the more of the default way of doing it. And this is how a lot of different software would do it. Like it's called Maya Catmull Clark, but it's really just a Catmull Clark algorithm. What this is doing is it keeps the border edges completely rigid and it softens the insides. Now you can see there are some issues with this between going between this and that. You can see that this is a much more true representation of what our model looks like. You see the polygons are square and the topology is nice and soft. Well, if we go to my Captain Clark, you can see that it becomes really pinched and nasty. Another issue with this as well is if we were to look at something more hard surface, if we just hide these guys and look at our a nice little cylinder, 
There are tons of examples where we have models like this, and these will be completely broken with this approach. If you see here, Cadmo Clark, you see it collapses onto itself. If we were, if we were to use none, it would be fine. Or if we were to use preserve edges and corners, it would also be fine. But Maya Kelpon Clark would be a complete disaster. So the issue of UV seams really happens the more low poly your model is. If your model is nice and high poly, you probably wouldn't see too many of these issues because that means that when you're texturing it, there isn't too much difference between your UVs and your actual uh, texture map due to how high poly your original model is. Now, in this case, we have we have deliberately made this model a little more low poly. You can see there's a lot of stretching here, but that's just to illustrate the point. In a real scenario, we probably would have just a little bit of, of uh, an issue here. We wouldn't have this much, but it's just good to illustrate what the main issue is. So now that you understand what's causing most of your UVCM issues, let's have a look at how to actually fix it. So since the issue is caused by a difference between the texture map and the UVs, we have to make sure that the texture map you're painting will be identical to the final rendered UVs. And we can do this in a very simple way. This actually has a really elegant and simple solution. The first thing you have to do is you should first probably just duplicate your model and we can call this high. And we will do what, what I just call pre-smoothing your model. It means that if you know that you're gonna be rendering the model with preserve edges and corners enabled, then we are gonna be texturing the model with preserve edges and corners enabled. Now there are a few ways you can do this. The first one would be that you can do this directly in your texturing software, like in Mari, where you can actually smooth your model. But I don't recommend that because now you are relying on that software's algorithm for smoothing. And even though it might say preserve edges and corners, it may not be exactly the same algorithm. And now you're gonna have the same issue again, where you're gonna be wondering why this doesn't match. This this is particularly prominent if you were to use ZBrush for anything regarding texturing or displacement mapping, where the UV smoothing in ZBrush is a bit all over the place. It's a bit of a black box. We don't really know exactly what it's doing and it's sure as hell not using <laughs> preserve edges and corners. In ZBrush, you mo is most likely use an approximation of the Maya Catmull Clark, but again, a bit of a black box and it's generally advised that you do not use the external software to interpolate your UVs. So then we're left with essentially one option and that option is to pre-smooth it. And we can do this by going to object mode, shift right mouse button, and then we go to smooth. And now you can see that our model will be subdivided. If we just hide the fish body as well, like so, you can see this is now significantly higher. Now we still have the same issues as before because we haven't done anything to fix the textures. Now there are two places we can actually change the UV smoothing. The first one is under the shape node, which is the second node from the left. Now, if we go under again, under smooth mesh and open subject control, this is where we have the UV boundary smoothing. And right now we're setting this to preserve edges and corners. Now this one is what this one is doing is simply controlling what happens when you hit the three key on the model, essentially what happens when you are smoothing the model. This is usually what would happen at render times. You're essentially controlling the render time UV smoothing. Now the second place you can do it now is, is under the poly smooth face node, which is a node we just added by going to shift right mouse button and then smooth. And this controls the actual smoothing of the polygons. This is not just at render time. This is the actual smoothing of our UVs. So now if we were to go to our UV editor, and then if we were to zoom in here, you can see we have the same options now. So UV boundary, if we go here, we now have none, which means it's gonna be exactly the same as before. We have uh, Mike Campbell Clark, and then we have preserve edges and corners. And this is the one we want to use. So currently, we now have a model which will have exactly the same UV smoothing baked into it as you will have at render time. Which means if you were to export this out now and paint it and bring it and bring the texture maps back, this would work. So let's do that. Now we are going to be selecting our model. Just make sure we have the right model. File and export. Then we'll put it in here and we'll call this fish high. Uh, you, what you can also do, if particularly if you do in production, it's a really good idea to include the UV smoothing. This is handy because if you're working in a collaborative team, they would know exactly what interpolation you are using. As a little tip as well, I highly recommend that you determine the UV smoothing before you start a project. If you don't do that, you will have seams on most of your assets. So we can just hit export. Now, if we jump into a texturing software, we can now load in our model and we can start painting on this. 
Now, in this case, we are using Mari, but you can feel free to use any software you like, whether this is Photoshop or Seaverse or anything. So then we hit new, and then we'll call this seam fix. Then we will select our model. And then we'll, the only thing we need here is really the base color. So I'll just kill the other ones. There's no reason to have that. And I also don't want this to be a 16 bit. I'll just set this to be eight bit as well. And then we can just create new project. Now, if you were to look at the ortho slash UV view, you can now see both the, um, the UVs and we can see the actual model. So if we're gonna go to wireframe mode and you can now see that this has indeed been smoothed the correct way, which means that based on this, we are ready to start texturing our model up and whatever we do in terms of the texturing will propagate perfectly to Maya and we won't have any UV seams. Now what I'll do, I'll simply import my texture and I'll fix a few errors and then we'll bring this back into Maya. So we'll just bring in our file now and then we should have our texture applied to our fish. Then let's go to ortho. And now you can see what this looks like. Well, let's just disable wireframe as well. And now what I'll do, I'll just fix a few of these areas. This is not a Mari tutorial. We're not here to really do nice texturing. We're just here to fix some of the issues. So what I'll do, I'll simply use the paint tool and then I'll just paint over some of these issues. Beautiful work. Now we have fixed our uh, textures and in, in a re more realistic scenario, you would have painted this from scratch. You wouldn't have just fixed these textures. But if you do have seam issues as well, this is a legit way of doing it. You bring a model into Mari or Painter and in your preferred software, you will now bring in your textures and there you will simply fix your issues. Then you'll export your maps out and you're good to go. Now we'll export out our um, maps. Now back in Maya, we will simply load the new texture map. We'll just delete history as well real quick, just to make this a bit simpler. Then Lambert, and then we will select the map we just created now. And now you can see this has now fixed the issues we were having. So this means that pre-smoothing a model is really the way to go when you are texturing anything. Whether it is in Painter or Mari or anywhere, you really want to make sure you pre-smooth your model first. Now, the last topic we'll talk about is edge bleeding. This is where the texturing software will extend the edges of the UV map just outwards into nothingness, really, just so that if there is a case of uh, UVC issues like this, this can hopefully be remedied by the edge bleeding. If we were to look at the original fish now, and you see that, like before, this fits perfectly with the edge, at least if we were in non-smooth mode, it fits perfectly with the edge. And there really isn't too much go by here. So if we were to move this just like a few pixels, we would really have issues with the seams. So, which means that of course, when we smooth the object like so, we will have issues. But if we were to use edge pleating with this, this would solve the issue in a large way. So in Photoshop now, we have our original texture with the beautiful pink background. And then we have the texture with actually how it was exported from ZBrush. And this is what it looks like. Here you can see that we have an extended edge going all the way around the texture. Now this isn't correct based on the texture map per se, because it's just kind of making up what's going on there, but it is really helping us avoid the UV seams. So if we now were to load in the texture map, which had the bleeding on it, you can now see that this extends just a few pixels around it. I believe in this case, 16 pixels. And this now fixes the issues. So in our case here now, looking at it, this is actually fine. You see that when we smooth it now, there aren't really any issues. So I highly recommend that whenever you are texturing anything, whether it be in Painter, Seaworth or Mari, that you enable full on edge bleed. Just set it to infinity if possible or set it to the maximum amount because this allows you to really remedy a lot of these issues. It also means, for instance, if you are doing anything with the texture later on, like let's say you are blurring the textures and using this as a utility for something else, this means that you can now blur it more and you have more to play with. As a word of warning though, regarding actually bleeding the edges, this works best when it comes to color maps. In this case, we have a fairly stylized texture map and bleeding across here probably wouldn't cause any issues. But if you have something more like a utility map, like a displacement map, where you really need all the data in the map, bleeding is not going to fix that entirely. It might help you a little bit, but it fundamentally is not gonna fix it. So to sum up why you have UV seams, most likely it is caused by a difference between your texture map 
and your UVs, where they just aren't matching up. The way to fix that is before you start to texture is you first determine what UV interpolation are you gonna be using on your project. If you're simply doing personal pieces, that's easier. If you're working in a bigger studio, that's a bit harder. You just have to determine that as a team. And you can do that simply going to the shape node and then you can go to smooth mesh, open subject control and UV boundary smoothing and change this to preserve edges and corners. There's no reason not to use this. This is really like in a fairly objective sense, the best UV interpolation. So make sure you set that for all your models at the render time. Then when you are ready to start texturing, you shift right mouse button on your object, then you go to smooth, and then you can change the smoothing algorithm to be using preserve edges and corners as well. Now you bring your high poly model, which has been pre-smooth into your texturing software in order to texture the software there. And as a last thing, use edge bleeding for all your texture maps even if you think it's fine the way it is just enable it it's free to use <laughs> just stay as clean as you possibly can and avoid as many of those seam issues as you possibly can so I really hope this video here has been useful. If you have any requests for more of these kind of videos, whether they be seam issue fixes or anything to do with texture and modeling, please let us know in the comments. We love to read the comments and we take a lot of our video ideas directly from the comments here. So thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.